Hello and Happy New Year. Welcome to the Grow Your Occupancy podcast, New Year edition. I'm Julie Podowitz, CEO and founder. Very excited to welcome Chris Horde to the show today. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Julie. Appreciate you having me on today. Oh, I appreciate you jumping on. Tell everyone a little bit about you and your distinctive career, pun intended. Chris <laughs> is the Chief Development Officer at Distinctive Living. He is an experienced construction and development executive with dedicated expertise in ground up construction developments, commercial repurposing and renovation, and managing staffing organization. Chris has 25 plus years of experience in the construction industry, building and running multi-state, multi-site programs nationwide. As a licensed general contractor, Chris built a national construction company specializing in senior housing renovation and has been responsible for developing and building over 10 million square feet of senior housing all over the United States. Wow. Currently, Chris is leading the development process from concept to keys on over 1 million square feet of independent living, assisted living, and memory care communities in states such as the beautiful state of Florida, my state current uh, Tennessee, Maryland, New Jersey, Wisconsin, Indiana, my gosh, Chris. In addition to all of this, he... You are in an, on the advisory board at Homes to Aspire. Want to learn a little bit more about that, Chris? A residential community for adults on the autism spectrum that helps provide self-sufficient living. Welcome again. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. That sounded wonderful. You need to do all of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you like listen to your bio sometimes, Chris, and think, who is that? I, I do. I'm still trying to figure out who that guy is and how did we get all that experience? <laughs> <laughs> wow. How was your holiday? It was fantastic. We got a lot of time with family. We became empty nesters this last year. So having the kids come back from college was fantastic. I'll take them as long as they'll stay. So we're just glad that they're still coming back. <laughs> That's awesome. So you're empty nesters. How's that going? We're still trying to figure it out. Um, I, I haven't been home very often, to be quite honest. We traveled quite a bit last year with the new role. Uh, and my wife uh, also travels. So she does senior housing, believe it or not. She uh, uh, works in recruiting for skilled nursing. So she travels around the state of Florida. And so we, we've kind of crossed paths uh, there at the end. And then um, we're just about to find out, I think, uh, coming into this new year, what that's really like, because we both uh, had the opportunity to go see the kids. Uh, they're spread out across the country. Uh, just have one finish up at Colorado State out in uh, Colorado. Uh, we've got one out at Brigham Young University in Utah. And then we've got uh, our youngest out at uh, Florida State. Um, so we're very excited to be able to go see them at their college and see their college experience. Um, but also uh, now see what this is going to be like without them at home. So it's yeah. a, lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, well, with all that traveling, it sort of feels like dating, maybe, you know, and you're, yeah. you know, getting back absence to it. Yeah. And you, you can kind of schedule the, that time. And we're empty nesters now, too. Our daughter also goes to Florida State. She's a sophomore. Oh, yep. I've got yeah. a freshman there and a sophomore out at, at BYU. So that's exciting. So, you, you know, you know, this, this road I'm starting to walk. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. And for us, Florida State, I spent 30 years in Southwest Florida. I know you're in Southwest Florida now. So Florida State was always north for us, like yeah. kind of far That's away, right. you know, like in, yeah. when you're in Southwest Florida, at least for me, it was just everything is sort of like there, you know, it's, yes. it's up, right? Yeah. Everything is up and all the states are kind of like, oh, it's sort of like Kansas and Colorado <laughs> and Tennessee, wherever that is. And Florida State seems so far. And now it's even farther because we live outside of Nashville. So it's about eight hours. Mm. It's, so a, it's definitely school, a hike. Yeah. Well, you know, having your children, you know, relatively far away. And I think that's a great experience. At least it is for our daughter. You know, when she's there, she's there. She can't come home, you know, on weekends. Yeah, it's definitely a different, um, it's been different because our, uh, our daughter that's out West at BYU, obviously being as far away as it is, they don't get right. to come home on the weekend. Um, we're four hours from Florida State. So it, it is kind of nice because we get to see her 
Uh, and so she'll come home and, and get a good home cooked meal and do some laundry and, and have mom and, and dad still wait on her. So we love that part. We'll spoil that's, them as much as we can. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. So, you know, this is the new year here, 2023. It's a time, Chris, that people kind of reflect on the year past and sort of looking at what's coming up for them. Just curious, when you think back to 2022, mm-hmm. what, you know, what, what lessons did you learn or what comes to mind? Oh, that's a great question, Julie. I think, um, I, I don't think any of us can have that thought without still thinking a little bit about the pandemic, right? Uh, we're coming out of it. I think all of us hoped for this big uh, lift in 2022. And I was reading an article the other day that said uh, uh, three things that, that really kind of resonated with me. It's learn from the past, live in the present, and plan for that future. And I think that's what I, I think about when I think about 2022. Uh, for us, I think it's so important. Um, I think for me personally, uh, number one, made this big, huge career jump. I uh, actually was able to obtain this goal that I had ever since I came into senior housing. And, and I came in on the sub side. So I was doing finishes. I was doing flooring. I was doing painting, and framing. And I, I found myself just enthralled and in love with this new thing that I had come across. Um, that turned into a major passion and, and I chased this dream. And so to actually be able to achieve that, I, that's probably one of the biggest things for me was that uh, the dreams that we all have are attainable. We can, we can do that. So I think that was a big takeaway for me from 2022. I think a couple other things is I think strategically, as I think about our company um, partnerships, uh, particularly with our capital partners, uh, as you think about 2022, we saw a major compression, um, high interest rates just skyrocket. Uh, we saw the building uh, landscape just drastically change. I think we saw uh, over a 20% increase in materials from January to March last year. Yeah. Um, and so I think if I had to kind of sum that up, we look at partnerships and how we were able to get through that, because if you didn't have strong partnerships, if you, whether that alignment with your subcontractors, whether it's general contractors, whether it's design professionals and, and all, all the way up to uh, our capital partners and development partners, when you didn't have that real strong relationship to be able to have really hard conversations that we all had to have. Because look, everybody's asking for, for more money and, and right. you just can't go out back and pick that off the tree, right? We all wish we could, but that's just not the reality. And right. so to be able to have those conversations and be able to have partnerships and collaborations that are willing to go, okay, this is what we can do from our side and, and get everybody around the table talking because it, it's not going to come from one side. This isn't a dictatorship. Um, and what we do is very special because at the end of the day, it's strictly about our residents and about the people who serve the residents. And I think for us and for me as an organization, 2022 was all about those relationships and how we could really not just fortify the ones that we had, but continue to uh, seek and find others that would add to that alignment of the mission that we were all trying to serve. And speaking of your, you know, partnership and your, your fulfilling your dream, which is so amazing. I'm really happy for you, Chris, and you're going to do Thank you. more incredible things, you and your team. You've had, a, you know, tell us a little bit about Distinctive Living, because this is a big change for you, right? Absolutely. You know, um, going from the construction side, going from business development and, and those relationships, uh, fortunately for me, I, I, I had that opportunity at a young age to be mentored and to be guided by others who were very strong uh, relationship folks. Uh, I think back to some of the early relationships I had um, uh, where I watched leaders truly lead. And one of the things that we do at Distinctive Living is we really focus on, on our employees. Uh, we were just named by both Fortune and by Great Places to Work. Um, we were honored to be listed as, you know, one of the 2022 um, companies 
of greatest places to work in healthcare. What an honor. But that really goes back to this leadership. I, I look at, at Joe and Lisa, our president, uh, George, who's our COO, and all partners of mine. I watch them interact. And it reminds me of those early mentorships that I had where when I would walk into a building, I'd, I'd watch these senior vice presidents stop and talk to those who were cleaning the building, those who were greeting you at the door, talking to a CNA who was on the floor. Um, I, I thought that was so impressive. And I thought, hey, they're remembering their roots. They're remembering what counts most. Um, they stop and ask residents, hey, how are these guys doing on our construction? It was a construction project. Yet they were asking, hey, how are you being impacted as a resident? And I've watched that same thing translate. And it's one of the biggest reasons I came uh, to this partnership with Joe and Lisa and George was because I saw the way that they treated other people. I saw the, the small little acts of kindness. And I think that's really a difference maker. Um, I think that was probably one of the biggest things that impacted my decision to come here. But also one of the joys I, I got to see, one of the successes I got to see uh, from 2022. I think the other big part of that, it goes hand in hand, is that transparency that we talk about. I, I think we got better during the pandemic. I think we were forced to be transparent during, yeah. during that pandemic. But I also believe that we can do better, that we can continue down that road. And, and I think that goes from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom. Um, we, we, it's, we talk about it very often, that servitude mindset. Um, we talk about uh, making sure that we are supporting the individuals. So we have to think about the one. We have the picture of the collective whole, but you get to that collective whole by serving one at a time. And I think that's a really big thing for us to keep in mind as we continue to grow, uh, not only as an industry, but in each one of our communities. Um, one thing I, I recently was witnessed uh, just was watching Lisa as we took over and we're transitioning a new asset that we were taking over and watched how she interacted with our, our EDs, um, that executive director. We position them, we uh, honor them, we, uh, we look to them as CEOs of this community and, and they have a big responsibility. Yeah, they um, do. Uh, they, we, they have to care for people. They have to, they have to excite people. And one thing I heard, again, goes back to what you asked, what, what was it that brought me here? What, what is it that we're seeing success? And uh, Joe Jodlowski actually gave a podcast recently on Senior Housing News. One of the interesting things I heard him say was, as we turn to our executive directors, as we walk into these buildings, what's the feeling that we feel? And if we have a successful building, normally what we're finding is there's a, a, a feeling of love and camaraderie and uh, jubilation as you walk into that asset. It's something you tangible, something you can actually feel. And so I think that's, that's one of the biggest successes for me and one of the biggest reasons uh, why it was so easy to make this, tra this transition and next step over. You know, you and I were at, in Nashville in the summer, right, at the Dream Again conference, we uh, hosted by Bridge the Gap a podcast. We're both ambassadors, that's how we met. And Inky Johnson. Yeah. Of course, you remember mm. the, the massively phenomenal uh, yeah. uh, keynote from from Inky Johnson, and he talks about you know we you, we hear a lot about just your why, right? You, the, a person's why, but he talks about a transcending why, and the transcending why drives us during you know hardships and you know all of the bumps and when you're not getting things aren't going well right and and when you were talking about you know ownership you know and, and investors and construction coming in to see and find out how people are doing and stopping and listening and caring it you know you mentioned kind of going back to your roots to me that's an example of a transcending why and is also like during, I mean, this is hard. These have been hard times, right? And, and you know, COVID and, and, and economy and staffing and, and more and more and more and more and all these um, more, you think, okay, how many more challenges, right? Can we all kind of, you know, grit through? And it's like digging into that transcending why. 
And uh, I think so much of him. I'm so grateful to have um, met him and I follow him. And he, you know, talks about it's it's who you are when it's really hard, you know. And it sounds like you've joined a phenomenal team that shares your your transcending why, you know, and that's that means so much. It really does. Um, and speaking about our trans part of our uh, transcending why is is why we all do this is our residents. And you said it's all about the residents. We all keep that in mind. And, you know, I think uh, talk about like that Ferris wheel where the resident right is in the center and we all have a seat in each kind of bucket of the Ferris wheel. And if we all keep the resident in mind in that center, you know, that Ferris yeah. wheel will be successfully, you know, turn uh, if we're jumping off or we the buckets are too heavy over here or we're, we're looking elsewhere, it's, it's going to uh, fail. What are customers looking for? You're in new construction and we've got, you know, uh, all the stats of how many people are, uh, we're all aging, right? Which is a good thing. <laughs> uh, what, what are customers looking for that maybe they, that's different from 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago? Well, uh, that's a great question. Um, I think we're all still trying to figure that out. I think it's evolving and I think it's evolving daily. Um, you know, <clears throat> one of the things I think that's so important, um, one of those transcending whys uh, that I think not only that we have as an organization that I have personally um, is do the right thing. And when you do the right thing, the, the, the dollars will follow, if that makes sense. Now, that doesn't mean if we build it, they will come. <laughs> I think we have to be very, very um, uh, definitive. We need to be very purposeful about that statement, meaning we have to do our due diligence. We have to follow the data. We have to do all those things, but you have to do the right thing. And the right thing, when I think back to 30 years ago, when I first came into this business, um, I think institutional. I think hospital. And that, that was kind of what senior housing was. In fact, I, it really wasn't called senior housing. It was nursing homes. That's what everything was identified as. And so I think the things that we're seeing today is, as we talk about the silver tsunami, as we talk about those baby boomers coming in, although they're just now starting, when we talk about new development, you're talking about a three-year, maybe a four-year process to even get that asset out of the ground. And so we're trying to be mindful of that and not get out over our skis. But I think one of the things that we see is socialization. Of course, that was just amplified by, by the pandemic. Not that I want to, again, go back to that too much. But I think it was amplified that we have to have socialization. We have to have areas that are large enough to allow people to come into it. Um, I definitely think we're seeing that residents are willing to give up a little bit more space in their room. Uh, their personal space so that they do have more common space. So I think we're seeing some of those things change. Um, systems, systems are changing, uh, mechanical systems, that for sure is changing. And then just engagement, um, having the ability to have a cooking class, have cooking uh, opportunities, seminars, art rooms, um, obviously, you know, auditoriums and um, uh, theaters are, are a big part of the communities that we build today. But being able to share those spaces and have moments with our loved ones, I think is what's really the biggest change. They want to walk in and feel like they're at home. That, that adult daughter wants to walk into an asset and go, I feel different here. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's yeah. really, really important. Uh, and we're going through that. Me personally, I'm going through that. I've got uh, three family members that are in uh, memory care right now. Uh -huh. uh, it's been a very tough challenge. So not, I don't say that now, just as a vendor, just as a partner, just as one who works in senior housing, I'm like living it. And that's been a big change for my mindset and my perspective. Yeah. You know, Chris, um, it it's, sounds like, you know, I'm listening to you talk that, you know, they're definite definite changes on from a construction standpoint, which I know nothing about, but really the things that, that you're really talking about while it's 
uh, you know, like you're talking about theaters and, and you know, some crafts and, and um, engagement areas and, um, but that, that's all, that's all wonderful. Um, but so much of what you're talking about is that isn't the bright and shiny necessary, you know, mm -hmm. necessarily it's wonderful, you know, new construction. And I love the fact that you know, we're all looking at how can we serve, you know, the new cohorts that are coming into the silver tsunami, et cetera. But even if some, you know, you don't have a brand new building or, you know, the, your, your asset is 30 years old, uh, these still can be very, very successful because the, these things you're talking about connection, vibrancy, I feel at home, spend time with people. You know, if you, you can do all of those things, common areas, right? Uh, no, we can't necessarily, you know, do, do some, I do want to ask you if you, if, if you could do one thing, but it, it really is in, it, it really is about people, right? And so, and it's like taking, Absolutely. you know, what you have, you know, in, and enhancing engagement and, and not downplaying at all how important it is yeah. to my father lives in assisted living too. He's been six years and, you know, it, he's not a social person, you know, and he, you know, doesn't need to do all those things. And what he really needs is someone to sit and just chat with him, even, even five minutes a day, right. you know, where you, where you're talking and connecting. And that's, that's, well, I, you, to do with the, you know, building, you know, that, which is again, a great thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be right. We, we could build the Taj Mahal, right. And that's not going to make a difference in an individual's life. What's going to make a difference within that Taj Mahal is what happens. And so right. we, we hear we hear the, the 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 phrase love stories. How do we create those love stories? Right. Right. Those are what they dwindle down to when you boil it down. It what that is that secret sauce. That's an experience. That's a that's a that's an emotional moment. It's a connection. Your word is beautiful. Um, I think about my uncle's uh, father, who we go and we pick up, and often he asks me to go pick him up, and he loves it when I'm inside and I get there early and I get to walk with him through the hall, and he's so proud to show me, hey, you know, this is so and so, and this is so and so, and he wants me to be part of his life, and so those are wonderful moments. Uh, I'll tell you just a quick story, maybe this will help uh, paint a, a bit broader picture. Um, what really hooked me, what brought me in the senior housing was I was renovating and repurposing, uh, several nursing home rooms and we would move residents. And this is almost 25 years ago. So back then everybody helped, right? Everybody could, could help re move residents a little different today for liability reasons. But back then I had a crew of guys and they knew how to work in senior housing. They were very uh, familiar with working in senior housing. It's very different from any other asset class that you work in, particularly one that is occupied. And so as we were renovating this room, we came and I met a man and he had a hat up on his wall and it said USS Indianapolis. And anybody who knows that story of the USS Indianapolis, it was uh, a tragic event in, in our World War II history uh, where this battleship was sunk, uh, had 1,900 crewmen, uh, 900 went in the water. 300 men survived and uh, just harrowing experience, you know, for all of these members and family members. This was one of those 300 that survived. And I got the chance over the next two days to hear his stories personally. And in, obviously that's enough to bring me into senior housing. That was, that was it. I mean, I was hook, line and sinker. I was in, but what really got me was that here I was a young 20 something year old boy had my own company. I was going in, I was painting walls, I was renovating, I was trying to make his space nice. But the first time I realized that was his home. That was number one. Second lesson was he got a tear when I was getting ready to leave, Moved, put him into his new space and he got emotional. And I thought, you know, what's going on? And uh, he said, you know, you're the first person to come visit me in two years. Mm -hmm. I made an impact in his life. And from that moment on, I just wanted to be in senior housing to make some kind of impact. I knew I could be something positive in someone's life. Uh, as you said earlier, you just need someone to talk with your dad. And they have stories. They have lived full lives. 
but I don't want that to take away from the people who serve them as well. They're just as important. And as we, you ask what's different, I'll tell you, as we're designing these buildings, I've got a project, uh, I've got four in full design right now. And one of the biggest things we talk about is how are people gonna walk these corridors? How are people gonna interact? Where are the employees gonna go to get away from the stress and all that comes on to them? And how do we make this really enjoyable for them? Do they have access to the outside? Are they in an interior core, you know, a room with no windows? What, how do we make this space that elevates them right. and thanks them and honors them uh, just as much as our residents? I really right. think that's important. That's something we're looking at. That's a great point, Chris. How many, uh, you know, break rooms uh, are interior, small, very second, third, fourth thought, couple, yeah. couple chairs and, a, you know, a rickety table and thinking again about our customers and, and, uh, you know, putting yourself, you can't walk in anyone's shoes, uh, but we can have empathy to think about what it might feel like, you know, like you said, to walk the halls, to work there, to, you know, engage. Um, what a great story. I, I you know, kind of made me tear up a little bit. Um, the impact that each, though certainly that, the, that gentleman made with you know gosh for our country um yes. and the so much greater than you know our our impact but just that fact that you listen to him and so it, it it's just that sometimes I, you know we do um especially this time like new year's resolutions and goals right. and you know and you, know, you have your company and oh, we're gonna do this but it can it can feel overwhelming and, and that's why so many new year's resolutions fail people oh, i'm gonna cut all white things out of my diet i'm gonna you know make sure that i uh, you know do this for 60 minutes a day and i'm gonna completely overhaul my life and we're gonna triple business and <laughs> it, it feels we're gonna make an impact and it can, it, it's just overwhelming. And the simple fact of just listening to someone, you know, or being with someone for five minutes it, it can make a massive and does make massive impact. So that was, it's like, say those micro changes, mm -hmm. uh, those, those micro decisions. And to your point, that's why I love senior living and people like you who are so incredibly motivated by human connection and, doing the right thing and and doing what you do for reasons that are you know more are more human if that makes sense or they're really good 100%. you know and speaking of that as we're wrapping up here on the advisory board of homes to aspire can you tell us all just a little bit about that i will i started uh, maybe four years ago um i've got a local developer that i work with and uh, his family personally was affected. And he tried to surround himself with people who had been affected with autism. I have a couple of family members who actually have autism and, and are high functioning. Um, and what was really interesting to me, and one of the reasons why I agreed to be on the board and, and participate in this was uh, that I had a, a very close friend at work at my, at my last uh, company. And uh, he had a daughter with autism and we talk late into the afternoons, into the early evenings about his fears. You know, what's gonna happen when he and his wife pass on? What happens to this child? And uh, I've got uh, several friends like that. And so the whole mission of, of Homes to Aspire is to create a, a safe space. Um, how do you do that? How do you, how do you do that with males and females and, and how do you do it with different ages and different world experiences that they're coming, uh, different home lives that they're coming into? And so there's been a lot of challenges um, to putting that together, but also a lot of really cool um, opportunity that's coming up that we're starting to see. Um, and very similar to senior housing. How do you create a space where they can be safe, where they can have connection, and where they can grow, where they can excel? Yeah. You know, uh, you asked earlier, what, what's the main difference between the past and today? I think it's, we don't, we aren't going to a place, you know, my air quotes, we're not going to a place just to put mom or put dad and let them live out the remainder of their days. We're hoping to let them go to a place that they can become honored 
and to go excel for the rest of their life. And as I deal with my, my own parents right now, currently trying to make that big decision, trying to go into senior housing, how, how do you help them recognize that this is a place that they can go and actually excel, actually be fulfilled and not look at it as this is my end of life, but yet to honor them and to live out some of the best days of their lives. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why I joined Homes to Inspire is, uh, Aspire is to help this community, which I think communities, you know, everything, the people are everything. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I think Denzel Washington or somebody recently talked about, you, know, you, you, you don't see a U-Haul hooked up to a Hearst, right? We're not taking any of this with us. But what we will take are our memories and we will take the feelings that we, that we shared, good or bad. And I hope at the end of the day, as a company, uh, as, as an individual, uh, as a human being, I hope that when people look back, they can go, okay, I was impacted for the better. And when I wasn't, that we saw a, 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 a change, a, a, a very purposeful change to make things better for others and who we come in contact in our lives. Chris, thank you so much for talking with um, us and, and uh, sharing us a little bit about you and the business is very, very fortunate that you're in it. And the, <laughs> uh, as we and all of your colleagues and we appreciate you so, so much. If someone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, Chris at distinctivedev.com uh, is my email, um, and most people can find me on social media. Social media as well, which is Chris Connects U, just the letter U, uh, and that's my handle. So glad to connect with people. Appreciate what you do, Julie. Uh, we always have a great time together. Uh, Nashville was a lot of fun, and always have a great time uh, being able to impact this senior housing together. So look forward to many more years together. You got to come back to Nashville, y'all. We're building a facility you know, just outside of Nashville. Oh, so all right. Let's set I'm, the I'm there date. for the next three years. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. That made my day. Chris, thank you so much again. Uh, if you want any information, uh, certainly about distinctive living, uh, connect with Chris. Uh, in Grow Your Occupancy uh, for sales, anything and everything related to sales and marketing. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and wonderful new year. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Julie.